So here we go again with more pretty diagrams. Dash, I'm thinking I'm going to have to move this about. Uh, oh no, hang on a minute. I can do this. I can do this. There we go. That's better. So, uh, this is about the electrical stimulation of the heart and its measurement. So, we talked in the cardiac cycle video about the sinoatrial nodes sending out this wave of excitation uh, across both atria. So, if we look at our sinoatrial node, I'll just I'll colour it in a brighter colour because that's not completely clear, I don't think, on there. Um, yeah, the camera works be better, wouldn't it? So, sinoatrial node here, sending out a wave of excitation across both atria to cause atrial systole. Now that wave of excitation is what we refer to as a depolarization. So that means that the cells are polarized, that means that they've got a negative charge on the inside and a positive on the outside. As they depolarize, that changes and it's that change that's going to cause those uh, the muscle to contract. If we're measuring it on an ECG, which stands for electrocardiogram, we can see that depolarization coming up as a little wave called the P wave. So P wave means that the atria are depolarizing. So the atria contract and they push the blood forwards down through into the ventricles and as that happens that wave of depolarization is gathered up into the AV node, the atrioventricular node. And from the atrioventricular node it's then going to start heading down the bundle of Hiss down the middle on its journey down to the apex of the heart. Now that actually causes a little sort of inverted little Q wave. So I will look at a whole bit in the middle but the little Q wave is actually that travelling down the septum of the heart through the bundle of Hiss. It gets to the bottom of the bundle of, of, of the to the apex of the heart down to the bottom of the bundle of Hiss and it starts to spread out up through the heart muscle itself of the ventricle and that causes um, a big sort of spike called, which is the QR bit. As it spreads and causes the uh, ventricular contraction, it then comes, drops back down. So we get this, uh, what we call the QRS complex, which is, so this is our P wave here. I don't know, you can't see that anyway. I don't know why I'm bothering. Um, so we've got our P wave atrial and then the QRS is this big, chunky spike there. Really, really obvious sign. And that's the ventricles depolarizing and then contracting. So that represents a ventricular contraction. Now you'll remember from the cardiac cycle video that as the ventricles are contracting, so as this is happening, this QRS spike, the atria will be repolarizing, they're relaxing. And that sort of, that would cause a wave, but it doesn't because it's masked by this enormous spike of electrical activity because the ventricles are so big. However, as the ventricles start to relax, that sort of wave of excitation is disappearing and that causes this little T wave at the end and that represents the repolarization of the ventricles. So if we look at a whole sort of ECG trace, ew, that's horrible. Ooh, that was not really much better on that side. Anyway, there we go. So we've got P wave, atria depolarize, atrial systole. We've got a little gap there. We've got the QRS complex massive as the ventricles, so that's Q, R, S, and then we've got the T wave at the end. Then there'll be a bit of a gap, and then we get the atrial depolarization, Q, R, S, P, T, sorry, <laughs> trying to do the alphabet. 
that's what a normal ECG chase looks like. Uh, so you've got a P wave, QRS, T wave, gap, P wave, QRS, and you need to be able to interpret that. So you need to know what each of these waves is representing. And you need to be able to spot the difference between a normal ECG and an abnormal uh, ECG trace.